this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Colin, and Colin has a past medical history of a spinal cord injury and complains of frequently dropping small objects. During an examination, the patient is unable to detect several monofilaments of differing grades bilaterally. Which of the following associated sensations is the most likely impaired? So we have A, ability to detect the pinprick sensation. B, ability to identify a paperclip. C, ability to detect hot and cold. And D is the ability to detect non-discriminatory touch. All right, so this is one of the questions right here that comes up on the exam and you really have to just have a good understanding of this because again, it's really consistent across a lot of different types of practice exams where they are asking you, uh, you know, the, the sensations. Like, do you understand the difference between what the sensations are that go through the dorsal column medial lemniscus, DCML, and then those that are going through something like the anterior spinothalamic, lateral spinothalamic, you get the point there, all right? So just make sure that you're very familiar with those before going into the NPTE. Now, let's start at the top of the question. It says, Colin has a past medical history of a spinal cord injury and complains of frequently dropping small objects. So the first part of this question is pretty straightforward. All right, spinal cord injury, um, and then now the patient's complaining of dropping small objects. So I can already tell that there's something going on in the upper cervical area, potentially. I mean, if the patient's dropping small objects, I know that they're having problems with the hand specifically, and so we must be hitting those roots, you know, that um, are going to affect, you know, the hands. And so I know that we're potentially having a spinal cord injury that's in the, the C1 area, maybe C2, C3, somewhere, um, you know, potentially below that all the way up to maybe a C8. Uh, but, you know, here we don't know exactly what level the spinal cord injury is. We just know that it's somewhere in that cervical region more than likely. Now it says during an examination, the patient is unable to detect several monofilaments of differing grades. And this is where I wanna highlight it, all right, because it is important, but I also wanna slow up and make some sense of it. So it says unable to detect several monofilaments. So why would I even do this? You know, when you probably think of monofilaments, you're probably thinking of sensory testing, of course, right? Maybe diabetes mellitus, somebody with a neur uh, neuropathy or something along the lines of that going on. When else do we use monofilaments though? It's not always when we're checking for um, pressure sensitivity or pressure sensation or protective um, sensation. It's not all the time we're using monofilaments for that purpose. Another time we will use them is if we're trying to do grading of light touch. All right. And when we do grading of light touch, we call that discriminatory touch. Can I give you another name for it? That can be a little on the confusing side. Have you ever heard of fine touch before? Well, listen, w the way that we are, are trying to assess for fine touch a lot of times is using these monofilaments of differing grades. And that is how we're picking up on what we call discriminative touch. Someone who's able to pick up on different like grades of fine touch. All right. And so we use different monofilaments to test for this. And it says in the question, the patient is unable to detect several monofilaments of differing grades, AKA the patient is unable to detect fine touch. All right. And that is bilaterally. And so that's a, a little note that I want to put out to the side, fine touch. And then we could put an X next to that, letting us know that uh, the patient's having difficulty with fine touch. Now, before I move on to the question stem of this question, can you tell me what track fine touch actually goes through? It goes through the dorsal column medial lemniscus track. And so it's really important for you to also understand, well, what other sensations go through dorsal column medial lemniscus? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let me read you the question stem. It says, which of the following associated sensations 
is the most likely impaired? Really, the question's asking you, since fine touch is impaired, what else can I expect to be impaired? That's what it's really asking. All right. And that's the reason why I was saying, do you know what the dorsal column medial lumniscus tract does? Like, do you know what sensations go through there other than fine touch? So let's look at the answer choice again, especially for those of you who are on the podcast right now. Um, so A says ability to detect the pen prick sensation. B says ability to identify a paperclip. C is ability to detect hot and cold. And D is ability to detect non-discriminatory touch. All right. So let's go with A first. It says ability to detect the pinprick sensation. Well, the pinprick sensation, that's really checking for pain, right? And so what track is that one going through? You should be saying, oh, for sure, that is going to be the lateral spinal thalamic track. 100% right there. And if you said that, I would be like, yes, you're 100% right. That is not a sensation that goes through DCML. And therefore, I wouldn't expect it to be impaired. I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to that one. All right. Because that particular sensation is lateral spinal thalamic, not DCML. Let's look at B. B says ability to identify a paperclip. All right. The ability to identify a paperclip is known as sterognosis. All right. You may have seen that come up in the O'Sullivan textbook, uh, physical rehab. If you check it out, you can read all about it. There, stereognosis is the ability to identify objects. All right. When the eyes are closed, that's stereognosis. Now I'm asking you that particular sensation, that ability, what does that go through? What track is it going through? Anterior lateral spondylomic track, DCML, if you said here, dorsal column medial lumniscus, you got that right. This is what we call uh, one of these special sensations that go through the dorsal column medial lumniscus. I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark next to it because I expect a patient's stereognosis to be impaired if their fine touch is impaired as well. All right. So that makes sense because those are associated with each other. Let's look at C. C says ability to detect hot and cold. Let me ask you, what does the hot and cold sensation, what track does it go through? You should be saying mm, lateral spinal thalamic track because pain and temperature, hot and cold, go through lateral spinal thalamic track. My question to you, the second question, well, is, is that what we expect? Do we expect it to be impaired for this patient? No, we don't. Why? Because listen, hot and cold doesn't go through dorsal column medial lumniscus. And so I do not expect it to be impaired in this situation. C is out. Let's look at D. D says the ability to detect non-discriminatory touch. Okay. Let's think about this. Non-discriminatory touch in a lot of your texts will be known as crude touch. Have you ever heard that one? All right. Very, very common to show up now. Crude touch, I need you to tell me where does crude touch go through? Dorsal column, does it go through lateral spinal thalamic, anterior, lateral, uh, anterior spinal thalamic? Which one? You should be saying anterior spinal thalamic track, boom, baby. And listen, we can X that one out. That can't be the right answer. Why? Because non-discriminatory touch, aka crude touch, it doesn't go through dorsal column medial lumniscus. And so I do not expect it to be impaired. Leaving us with our final answer of B, ability to identify a paper clip. Boom. There you go right there. Listen, you know, when it comes down to this question, you, first of all, if you got this question correct, congratulations, not an easy one. A lot of times we got to understand these different sensations, how to test them, what they are and the different names for them, right? Sterognosis, you got to know what that is and what it means. Barognosis is another one that has to deal more with different types of pressure and being able to, to um, determine different types of weights or pressures. Um, 
So listen, you have to have a good understanding of not just how the tests are performed, but what they're testing and what these different sensations are and what tracks they go through. Yeah, I know that was a mouthful right now, but listen, I'm just trying to prepare you at the very best for the MPTE.